And good evening. This is the Rutland Town Planning Commission. This is Thursday, March 11th of 2021. Welcome everyone. Let me start by doing a quick um, attendance roll call here. Um, Howard Burgess. Jim yep. Hall, looks like here. Yeah. And Sherman Hunter, Andy McVean, Mary Beth Poley, Jerry Stearns, and myself. So right now you are you are a voting member, Jim. Okay. Um yeah, until um we uh until dana joins us or norm joins us and they're both a little iffy so first thing on the agenda is approval of the agenda i would like to um add something to the agenda um we will be looking at the velco subdivision again tonight and we've got people here from velco so i'd like to add that probably right off uh at the top of the new business. And I think that would be the only change. Does anyone want to move to approve? So move. With that addition? Yes. Okay, Jim, uh, second? Second. Okay, Howard. All right. Um, is there... Uh, member, any members, or are there any members from the public here that would like to speak? I'm not quite sure who uh, Catherine's iPhone is. Are you, are you here with Velcro? Velcro, are you um, just listening in? I'm just listening in. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hi, Norm. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. Okay, Jim. <laughs> um, yeah. You're, you're back to being an alternate. All right. The first thing on the agenda for new business would be... Um, to look at the, the Velco um, subdivision again. Um, this is the one in Post Road, off Post Road. And so um, we've, you were sent this afternoon, this, this happened um, at the last minute today that um, we, you were sent the, the plat, the preliminary plat a couple of views of that. And um, so we, we've got the forms. Does everyone have the forms that were filled out? Yes. Or do, okay. Yes. We don't need to project those. You've got them, you've got them in front of you. Okay. Are we supposed to have the attachments also? Those were all sent out early in the, in the, at the last meeting. So I just sent out the changes to this uh, that were on this one. Okay. You all set, Sherman? Okay. So we've got, we still have a couple of versions of form number one and, and welcome to the folks from Velco. We are on, we are now talking about your subdivision. And Barbara, we are all set on signatures and everything like that. So we're, we're, we're all good on that part of it. So, so we do have just one form one now. Uh, I, I have, I have the two, but it's, it's okay. Like I have two form ones. One has the signature from Velco. The other one has from Dick Thomas. So we're, we're, I'm, we're good with that. Okay. Okay. As long as it's not confusing. No, no, it's not. Going through the records. When we're, when we're, excuse me, when we're talking about that, are we talking, uh, one from Velco is uh, just signed by Velco and the other one is signed by Dick Thomas, but the substance of it, form two is, is just one copy, is that correct? Yes. 
so back to form one and and looking at the plat um we've got eight requirements there and just want to make sure we can check all of those off that they're satisfactory does everybody see those hey bar yeah uh, just to okay. correct norm we we have a a form number one with both names both signatures on it he he indicated we had two number ones one with one only one signed by each one of them but we have a form number one with both signatures on it oh excellent so I, what came in today was i think was uh forms with separate signatures. I just want to make sure I wasn't lost. No, there was there was two form number ones, Norm, and one of them has got both signatures on it. That's what I got. Hang on to that, Howard. Yep. <laughs> Don't okay, lose just... that one. Okay, so um, are these eight required you, items? Howard. Anything missing from the plat? The only thing um, I would ask is um, whether there's any way to put in the utility improvements or additions. Do you mean our substation upgrade? Um, uh, no. Um, yeah, poor choice of words. The, um, the storm sewer. We, right? we haven't designed any of that yet. We're at this point, we're simply buying the land for a future um, build. Right. We right. haven't designed even the substation, the, the new location for the control building or anything. Okay. Or the sewer connection, but it's going to go probably right from the building to the road, I, I assume. Okay. Is, well, I don't understand the subdivision at this point. <laughs> We're simply buying land at this point. We aren't even, I mean, we didn't buy it to develop, you know, put in a, a housing unit oh, or anything like that. No, I, I didn't mean to suggest that. Yeah. <laughs> but you're buying one large parcel from right. the Thomas family to add to what you have now. Right. And, and when you, we come wait, to the whoa, point. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let ahead, me finish, sorry. please. But <clears throat> you do not have any plans about any written plans about what's going to go on the new property, including the location of the lines to the sewer and that kind of stuff. We, right. We have not come up with the general arrangement for the new substation upgrade, but it's, it's not, it's going to be a very modest fence expansion. It's not well, going to. And we understand that as well. Okay. From your, from your appearance last time. I'm not sure I, is the subdivision here dividing the Thomas property? Is that what it is? Or are you buying the entire parcel there? We are buying less than half of his parcel that's for sale. Okay. And I, as far as I understand, they had two big parcels for sale and we're buying a little of each. So we had to go through this process to come up with new subdivision lines is how I understood this. Okay. That wasn't clear to me. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I suspect so, it was clear to everybody else, but not me. <laughs> Sandy, when do you think you'll be doing the design? <laughs> Douglas, that's your question. Yeah, we'll be working on the designs this summer and uh, we're looking to file our 248 application with the, uh, the PUC. Uh, we're targeted uh, first week of July, but uh, there's still more design work after that. So it'll be uh, probably the third quarter of this year that we'll have the designs wrapped up. But see, the whole design and all of the improvements go through the Public Utility Commission. So mm -hmm. I, I assumed the only thing we were coming to the town was for the appropriate subdivision permission. That's, that's correct. As I see okay. it, we're just here to, for the subdivision for the land, the, whatever you do 
future down the road as you, as the Velcro utility. I don't think we need to know or care about. We know you're going to we, we know you're going to put a sewer line in. We know you're going to probably move some fences. You may put up a little building, but we don't need to get into that. Well, okay. but you will. Um, you're a statutory party. The town is. So I'm sure that okay. Doug will have a presentation to go to the select boards and and show the town exactly what's happening before we file. But but you need to get the land first before you can exactly. take the next step. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what we're doing here tonight. Getting you the land. Okay. That. Yeah. Um, do we have a subdivision number yet, Bill? We do. It is. 311. 311. Okay. So um, does anybody, we can put yes on those eight items for the plat. I'd like to move along here. Okay. So we go to form two now. So we're looking at we're looking at this in terms of this is a preliminary plat. These are the general requirements, um, and this is a major subdivision. And um, Velco has has filled this out for us. I I think a number of these knows. Um, instead of being a no and raising a red flag would be um, um, probably not applicable. They're not right. exactly asking for a waiver on all of these no's. So does everybody have this in front of them? I'm going to go down I mean, I think one through six are fine. Seven zoning districts put non-applicable there. Um, 11 water courses. Hopefully that doesn't include wetlands, but probably doesn't. So we'll put non-applicable there. And there's some notes in here that Velco has added. Um, Number 14, connection to um, municipal water mains. Um, that's non-applicable, correct? Right. Okay. And then we've got 16 through 18, park and open spaces, doesn't apply. Other essential features, I'm not sure there would be any. and the location of all trees on site. And you put a no on that, why, on that number 18? Well, I don't think, uh, first of all, I think it's, I'm not sure how many trees are there. I think it's just that we didn't, he didn't add an edge, edge of clearing or edge of woods. Um, I, I, if it were a development, I could see why that would be important, but um, I'm not sure w what would be the value of showing the trees if we're not cutting anything near the substation. <laughs> yeah, it, it mostly applies to housing projects. So okay. that- you know, That's what I thought. Come, yeah. Someone doesn't come in and take down all the, tr all the beloved trees that the neighbors okay. have been enjoying and such. Um, okay, so we'll put non-applicable for 16 through 18. And now 19, it requests um, specific information at a distance of 100 feet. Um, you did not survey that far, and the reason is? Private property. Um, the surveyor's job was to identify the boundaries of the Thomas parcel. So he didn't, I mean, those are tiny little houses along the north east part, and uh, he didn't go on their property to survey anything. Yeah. In fact, I never asked him to. 
is that also important for this subdivision? Marv, I would say, I would say now we would worry about this if we were building a housing development and we wanted to know if a neighbor nearby had a well nearby or a septic, something oh, okay. that we're going to have a conflict with. But this, but this year, no, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't, it isn't important. Not for this survey. Yeah, would you give that a not, not applicable? Howard? Yes, yes, I would, yeah. Okay, and uh, how about number 20? I talked to our surveyor about this and he said it would just create such um, busyness on the, on the, on the plat and um, also that there's already the uh, SVE map that's filed with the town that shows all the contours. He said it would just really be cluttering everything to put contours on. What is an SVE plat? The yeah. SVE plat is who, who, who platted the Thomas's first subdivision, the one where the Armed Forces Reserve Center bought that section for their facility. Mm -hmm. But that's on file with the town. Um, How are you comfortable saying yes on this one? On contours? That, no, we don't, we don't need contours. We, 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 don't, we don't typically, we don't require contours on most uh, any of our plats, unless it's an unusual situation where we really need to know. Uh, but, but normally we don't, we don't require contours. I don't see why we would need them here. And Jerry, you say we, we normally yeah, I wave agree. those. We, I agree. We wave that all the time. It's it's almost never shown. Okay. Yeah. So okay, we'll wave that one. A um, couple more here. Number twenty-one: the um, cross sections and profiles of grading streets, highways, and sidewalks. Um, that would be non-applicable. And 22 private sewage disposal would be non applicable. And 23 and 24 would be non applicable as well, right? Yes. And so the only requested waiver would be of number 20. And we'll say it's not necessary or something to that effect. Uh, what's that, Chairman? I said, how about non applicable for 25? Yeah. yeah. So Barbara, what I'll do for, for that one with the contours is, is put put it down as the waiver was granted because they're on file already. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, do we want to approve this preliminary plan? We still, we still got some more 26, the second page, Barbara. We have some more of these. We go through. Oh. Form we three. Still, oh, that's right. We still have those. And Thank just you. so I'm clear, the only reason we became a major subdivision was because at some point we're going to connect the control building in the substation to the town sewer. That that was the hook. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number twenty six. Um, Public use, dedication of, of all parcels of land are shown not applicable. Final on the flat. Yeah, on the final flat. Uh, 27, they should be there. 28 should be there. 29 as well. Um, a little 
caveat here for 29A about the corner markers. And only two pins need to be set, all shown. So um, there must however, have been existing monuments, I think, in that he only needed to set two more additional pins. Okay, so can we give that one a yes, Howard, Jerry? I think so. Uh, well, we don't, they don't need to set any corner pins is what we're saying here. Is that correct? They've, 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 all the pins are essentially in place only for, only two pins needed to be set wherever that was. Uh, I'm reading it that the pins are already in place. According to the legend, there's, uh, there's a capped rebar set. So I'm assuming those are the new ones and that's 31 and 32 which are all the way to the left of the map, out way out near Route 7. Okay. 31 and 32 are the symbols for the cap rebar set versus the cap rebar found. Yeah. So we're good with it then. We're all set. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, okay. And then 29B, uh, the monuments, to be set at all corners and angle points. Um, that's a no, why Sandy? Because it said for new roads, we're not proposing a new road. Okay, so yeah. put non-applicable there. And number 30. And no new streets proposed, so. Right. Not applicable. Okay, so that's I don't. A, that's not a NA, also, right? Yes, that is an NA. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so I. I have one question, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure I understood you. You're right. <clears throat> Um, you indicated that um, you were buying two small pieces. Is that correct? Did I hear you correctly? We we're buying 31 acres, 31. Well, that, that's, what, that's what I thought I heard you say you were buying two small pieces in answer to We're, we're buying, um, yes, a portion of the previous two Thomas subdivided parcels. They had like parcel A and parcel B. And they were east and west. We're buying north and south, you know, and leaving a south parcel. So we had to cut new lines and divide their property up differently. So we're buying one big chunk of two separate previous lots. No, I understand that, but I got. <clears throat> but I don't understand why... your question. I'm sorry. No, all I was looking for, Claire, I thought. I heard you say in the beginning you were buying two small parcels. And then as I look back over the materials, I saw, saw 31 plus acres. And I was wondering if I heard you correctly or incorrectly. That's all. Okay. But it's 31 acres mm -hmm. from two separate, a total of 31 from two separate parcels. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I'll entertain a motion about the preliminary plat, whether it's ready for approval. So moved. Okay, Norm. I'll second. Okay, Sherman. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so I don't think you need to make any changes um, for the final plat. And we should be able to um, have a public hearing on this in three weeks at our next meeting, which would be April 1st, I believe. Ooh, bad day. Oh boy. <laughs> 
Well, we can push it off to another three weeks. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> want to play it safe. Thank you. So um, I, I have Dave prepare mylars and send them to the town, the two sheets. So you would do the, we're going to do the, the final plat, which, which I, I think we can just use this, if I'm not mistaken, Barbara. The, mm -hmm. the mylar we is due, uh, I believe, 90 days after the approval of the final hearing. So that way, if anything changes, okay. it's not created then because that, that's a bigger issue. So, um, sure. so what happens now is uh, we'll need the check for the application. Um, you can mail it to the office or bring it to the office is fine. And I will get the uh, notices uh, out to the abutters and publish in the paper. Wonderful. And you've Thank got you very list. much. Yeah, sure. And Bill, you're all set with a list of the abutters? <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> or, or will be? Yeah. It's a big list, but yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it, Sandy and and the others, Doug okay. and whoever else is here. Um, See you we'll in three weeks. In three weeks, and that may be the last time. We'll, have to, <laughs> well until Section two forty eight, I guess. But yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. I think we're just, um, are, are there some people just uh, just listening to the meeting um, or do, do you want, we can go back to public comment if anyone has any comments. I think a couple people joined us late. If not, we'll just uh, proceed. Um, we've got um, reappointments up for the Planning Commission. We've got five of them. They are Dana, Mary Beth, Norm, Jim, and myself. And um, everyone has indicated that they are interested in being reappointed, unless they've changed their minds in the last few days. So um, I'll entertain a motion to accept that, that slate of reappointments and I'll take it to the select board. Move to, am I cutting somebody off or do I have the floor? Go ahead, Andy. Um, move to uh, request that the select board uh, reappoint all the, uh, the planning commission members that are up for reappointment. I'll second. Okay. okay, Jerry. Sherman, did you have something to say? Did you want to give a speech or something, Sherman? I was attempting to make the motion that Andy made. Okay. And no speech. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I'll take that. Now this next item under new business uh, the select board is opening up the possibility if there's any, any ordinances, town ordinances, that um, we think should be updated, changed, um, they would, this is the time. Um, you know, they, they're going to, they're looking through the whole list. So I, I know we've, we've talked about some of the things that don't seem very applicable in the subdivision ordinance um, in particular. And I haven't researched it you know, well enough it's to see if, if everything that's, that we have now is required by statute, um, but that could be part of this process if, well, if we wanna undertake it. Yeah, the only thing I would have, Barbara, is that um, there are references in the subdivision regulations to zoning. I don't know how they got in there. Um, 
but it seems to me that's inappropriate. And we, at least we ought to be authorized to deal with that. Yeah. So, and it's also, one, it's also one of our subdivision. If you notice in the questions, there was one question that talked about compliance with zoning ordinance mm -hmm. on the, in those 29 questions. And it just always puzzled me because I know that <clears throat> we don't have it. And, and never have. And, and that's, yeah, that's why I'd like to see if it's in statute that that question has to be asked. But, um, well, uh, Barbara, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, um, almost slipped through the cracks back when I was on the select board was the floodplain ordinance. Now, that's uh, that was handled at the time I was on the select board by a committee that the selectman uh, appointed specifically for that. It wasn't a planning commission item. And if uh, that is still the case, then uh, so be it. But if they're expecting this uh, planning commission to uh, carry forward, make sure that everything is up to date, maybe it's just something to check on and so that nothing falls through the cracks. And that ordinance was developed by who, Jim? It was developed way, way back in the 70s uh, to meet the requirement for floodplain insurance for folks that uh, had property in the floodplain. Uh, the feds insisted that uh, we have a zoning ordinance. Every town had was uh, in the same fix that uh, didn't have zoning. So uh, it meant that they had to come up with uh, committees and such that uh, were able to fill all these uh, required uh, requirements that the feds were looking for. And um, we had a couple of reviews when I was on the board, just to be sure that nothing was uh, outdated or we had missed something that uh, should have been in there that was new. And every so often, I believe we, we owe it to the folks that are purchasing insurance in the floodplain to be sure that the thing is up to date so they can uh, be covered. Right. So we, right. I'm not we sure. Have, we have a flood hazard. We do have a flood hazard ordinance that was adopted in 1987, and there have been no amendments to it. That oh, there, well, yeah, no, no amendments after 87 were done to it. I see. Well, that uh, <clears throat> that tells me then that the feds haven't uh, put anything new. In, it, in terms of uh, requirements, obviously. Since 87? Hmm. Yep. That's worth looking into. <laughs> well, isn't this what? preempted by the federal statute? It's a, it's a federal... Um, I don't know whether you call it a regulation or a law. I, I have a feeling it's a, it's a law. And um, that's about all I can tell you. I don't have a copy of it. Yeah. Well, well thanks for bringing that up, Jim. I, I'm not sure how many properties in the town have floodplain insurance, but that might be something that we could check on at some point too, because, um, I, you know, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, should I go to the select board 
and suggest that uh, we may want to look at the subdivision ordinance to see if uh, if we um, need to bring that up to date or take some things out of it and um, and take a look at the flood hazard ordinance. That's mm -hmm. out. Did you have something to add there, Jim? No, I did not. I, I spoke my piece. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, anything else? Any other homework we want to give ourselves? Huh. Please. Okay. Well, I'll do that. And moving down to um, old business, we've got we've got the unfinished business of the uh, questions for developers. And I'm not quite sure where we, we left off. I mean, Norm, you should have copies of some of the suggestions Norm made to some of the changes I made. And Jim, what, do you were agreeing with Norm's changes or did you have some additional ones? Uh, I, th I think Norm was uh, in agreement with me on the, the, uh, the concept of addressing uh, some of the wet areas. I believe that was, that, that was the issue. Norm, do you remember? Jim, I didn't quite. Uh, addressing what? Some of the what? The wetland issues. Yes. Stormwater runoff and that kind of thing. We're including so that in, in the, on the front end stuff. I didn't go any further on that once I found out that you were digging into that. So, well, I really didn't dig into it other than to note that, well, it is now included in the um, in the materials that were sent out. I guess it was the other day too. So I wasn't looking to look into it anymore. I just wanted to be sure that it was addressed. But let me see. I, I don't recall any other questions that I had about it. But maybe we need another category for wetlands. In, in my going through uh, the list that we had, uh, I kept running it up, kept coming to the conclusion that I have difficulty limiting. I can't hear you, Sean. Can anyone else hear me? I can't hear him. You're, you're breaking up a little bit, Sherman. Okay. I, I just have, I have trouble coming up with a list of questions that, that are going to be complete. Uh, are that are always going to be necessary? It, it, uh, it, it, I'm, I'm not, I feel more comfortable with our, our saying, let's limit our questioning people to things that are important to us, rather than attempting to, to, to limit ourselves in questions. That doesn't mean we don't have a list, but not a list that's going to be the only thing we can ask. Because otherwise, we have to think of every situation that would come up in our be able to do that. Right. So this this whole thing kind of seems to it almost like morphed into something. I I, I kind of agree with Sherman. All I meant out of all this is just to kind of put forward a you know a lot of thought before you ask a question. I'm gonna 
I, I like the last meeting, I just, I thought it was important that we, we think about the questions we ask. I'm not singling Norm out, but Norm, when you ask that question of that developer about, did they think through the, of that project and how it would, whether or not people would, um, if it was an appropriate uh, development for that property, it just kind of made me think to myself, we really want to think through what we ask. If we turn one developer away for a five to $10 million project, because they think, why did that guy ask that? It, it, and it was something that we didn't necessarily need to ask or have any. So I'm not singling Norm out. It was just a question that it was kind of like my thing about, I rest my case. I don't think that we need to ask a bunch of questions or limit what we ask, but we need to be thoughtful of what we are asking. That's what this whole all started with is just be mindful of the question you're asking that you're not going to, you know, how tall is your building going to be? When we don't have that say, we want to be careful not to limit a developer. I'm not, I'm not necessarily pro development, but I, I just think it's important that we think about the scope of what we can ask and we, we kind of maintain that. That's, that's what this all started out and it kind of morphed into something else. Yeah. Well, I think um, I'm glad you clarified because I, I was concerned and what I could, Sherman, I couldn't hear you very well, but I guess I, I think from what I heard from Sherman, I was concerned about the same thing. Um, what I think has happened with this four page uh, sort of permit summary is that if this is given to a developer when they come in and ask what they have to do and they have a checklist that will certainly simplify and eliminate a lot of our meandering uh, because they have a script and Bill can tell them what's applicable and what's not, and particularly with the road ordinance, that uh, highway ordinance, driveway ordinance, curb cuts, and that's always something that people seem to overlook and we have to bring up. And the more I sit on this commission, the more that's important to me for fire. It never dawned on me how important it is to make sure that that's accessible. Um, but, but of course, the, 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 any project of this size, every bit of that is covered under Act 250. I mean, we, we you know what I mean? We, we can make suggestions or give them this list, but when a project steps over a, a one acre, especially a large commercial project, I'm not saying we don't have concerns or comments or questions, but we need to be mindful of what we're asking those developers because we have very little say in anything they can, that, that they, that's gonna be taken up there. Whether it's, you know, that, whether it's a curb cut or water or sewer, or whether we ask them if they've, looked at the demographics of the people that are going to use that project, that's not for us to decide. And I, I don't want to limit what we can ask, but I think we need yeah, to be really I, thoughtful yeah. of the questions we ask when we do. When I, we ask. Yeah, I, I, yeah. If that's the question you were mentioning before, I didn't, um, yeah, I, I was kind of, it, it was inappropriate. Uh, well, and I, and I was surprised that it just came out before I thought, well, what the hell difference does it make to us? We're, you know? Right. I, and, and I'm not, and once again, I'm not trying to single out just, I think we need to be careful that we don't ask something at some point. And maybe I've already done that myself to push somebody in a direction where we really don't. And that's what this all started out with just to be mindful of the questions we ask. So we don't limit development, not, mm -hmm. not to limit ourselves just so that we don't limit development or ask something that's outside our purview. Yeah. So, um, Maybe we have a list for Bill of some of the town requirements and ordinances. Um, many that are, that are already included in here. He just has that for people that come in or phone in. Um, but we follow Jerry's advice for our meetings and our questions and conversations with developers that we don't have a script for that. And we agreed that we would tell them in the beginning that we're asking questions in an attempt to support them, in an attempt to, to, uh, to find a problem with their system. So our questions are not gonna, going to eliminate them from whatever they're attempting to do. 
I think that's at the beginning. That's that's the statement that's at the beginning of the the document that Bill sent out this time. Okay. It starts out with questions are not intended to approve or disqualify you. Right, right. And we've had some discussion of maybe tweaking that a little bit that these questions are intended to help us give you the information I guess you need or. Well, well it follows up the second sentence is our objective is to get a comprehensive understanding of your proposed project to help you find the most appropriate resources going forward. That's what's here now, I didn't notice that. Yeah. So if we just keep those lines in mind when when we're talking with developers, will, will that be enough? Well, what do we, well, it's for another day, that's okay. And maybe just finish up this list for Bill so he has it at his desktop. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like it's time to move on. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> okay. The uh, the next item is the um, the select board request to look at the transportation the, the Vermont Transportation Board letter about um, airstrips and helipads. So. Um, we don't need to do much with this tonight. Um, at some point, I think the next next step is to decide: do we want to in, do we want to get involved? Do we want to take their advice and put some more language somewhere um, in town documents that address these, you know these infrastructure, this infrastructure that's going on um, in other parts of the state, yes or no? And if it's yes, um, will it be the town plan or do we want a standalone ordinance for this? Well, I, personally, I think we should not do anything until we have a chance to talk with some communities that are actually living with us. Mm. Because I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't know anything about the whys, wherefores, and the concerns that follow um, that item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Andy? Yeah. We could uh, I good. think it's important that we address it. Um, certainly the helipads, uh, you don't need too much space for a helipad. Uh, one thing that kind of brought this to forefront for me was, was the fact I saw um, an acquaintance of mine showed me a, a picture of an airstrip that he developed. And I happened to notice the aerial photograph had five airplanes sit next, on the, next to the strip. So <laughs> therefore that kind of means that the one man airstrip might have a whole lot of neighbors uh, <laughs> using it. So that was the first thing. And then the second thing is, even though I don't think we really have any space in Rutland town for a particularly good airstrip, um, but I could be wrong. A, a helipad is certainly there. And uh, when you read the, uh, you know, the, the letter of the state came down, the, the issue of uh, sand and gravel and dust and whatever, um, proximity to a property line, uh, possibly we should address that in, in either form, the ordinance or the uh, town plan or possibly both. Mm. I think it, I agree with Andy that we ought to be ahead of the curve, uh, but I also agree with Jim that we ought to get some information from some municipalities who have developed ordinances, take a look at some of the things they've considered that we might not, then we can proceed. So I don't know. 
uh, maybe you've called to the transportation department and asked what towns have enacted ordinances. If there are any in Rutland County, that's certainly a first step. If there are any in uh, Addison or Bennington, that would be the next place I'd look. Um, uh, but that's just how I would go about it. But I do think it's something rather than trying to play catch up when we get complaints or when we get a project, uh, if somebody comes in, um, right now they don't even have to come into us. They can just build it. That's right. That's are there right. are there any is anybody aware of any helipads, helicopter pads in Rutland Town? Yeah. Velco. I'm sorry? Velco has one on Pinnacle Ridge. Yeah, I, I thought so. It, uh um, but that may be the only one. I, I don't even know if the reserve center, I, I don't see anything at the reserve center on, you know, off in Post Road. And they may not have something there because of all the utilities that are nearby too. But, but Velcro is the only one that I'm aware of. Chairman? Document also uh, offers for the... Um, the transportation board executive secretary to meet with us to, to answer any questions or to give us information, which just sounds like a nice place to begin, because that person would probably have uh, at least, it, at a minimum, they could tell us what other municipalities have dealt with this, and we could go to them. Yeah, that's within this letter that he offers he's offering to come speak to, to um, any groups, planning commission, select boards. Um, and, you know, the transportation board is the one, is the entity that hears complaints and adjudicates those sorts of things that have to do with transportation issues, in, including these aircraft. So do you want to start there? It's um, the executive secretary, John Zaccone. Um, I, I think he's probably got a pretty good grasp of what's happening around the state, the way he wrote this letter. I would, if he comes down, I, th I, I think it's a good idea, but I'd also ask him if there are anybody in Rutland Town, in Rutland County, if there's any town with an ordinance. I'd ask the questions that I asked before, uh, if he could bring us a couple copies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think we'll be asking him to come down. And well, you yeah, know, visit with us, whether it's yeah. Zoom or... Right. We wouldn't need to do that. Okay. Sound like another plan? Yep. Start there? Yep. Okay. Okay. Down, um, we're down to announcements. Yes. So I have one. If, well, if anybody else has, if you have, go ahead. Then You've got the floor, Norm. You have nothing? No. Oh, okay. Um, this is more in the form of <clears throat> something to think about. Uh, you know, we work very hard on our enhanced energy plan and had, I think, some very solid recommendations. And for one reason or another, including the pandemic, the select board has not taken any steps to implement any of them. And I think it might be appropriate and important um, to see if we could somehow uh, get some action uh, to begin implementation of some of our recommendations. I'm not sure how to start with it. I think that we ought to perhaps um, think about which ones or important enough how to do it. Um, I think uh, what vehicle to enact it in terms of implement it, et cetera. So there's some thought to be done. Um, perhaps if not for the next meeting, but the following meeting, we can individually just review those couple of pages. I think it's 67, 68, right at the back of the energy plan, enhanced energy plan and the town plan and um, uh, just take a look and see what 
you know, refresh our recollection, so to speak. I, I've messed with this over the last six months off and on. I've talked to Barbara a little bit. The time has never seemed right. Um, <clears throat> but I, I would like to begin to get started. It may take us a good bit to come together and get a consensus and how we do it and how we put it to them, how we propose it. <clears throat> but I'd like to get started on it. Thank you. Yeah, so, so Norm, you're suggesting we take a look at what we put at the end of the energy plan for what, we, what we're what we going to do. Well, to <clears throat> I think refresh our record, excuse me. <clears throat> I think just become familiar with it again. Um, think about how to proceed there's a piece of me that thinks maybe we ought to have a subcommittee uh, to get together and uh, come up with a proposal to bring back to the planning commission like we did on that uh, ethics thing uh, that worked out so very well. Um, uh, I gave some thought to <clears throat> everybody coming to a meeting uh, after reviewing this with a uh, three or four choices of what we can implement. Uh, everybody hand those in, in writing in a sense, have a subcommittee to go over and kind of pull it all together and see what everybody thinks is most important and then figure out how best to proceed from there. Um, okay. Does everyone agree with Norm's approach? Number one, take a look at the plan, get some ideas um, for what's most important in that plan and what we should be proceeding with, and then maybe go to some of these other steps. Um, I think, you know, they overlap uh, various portions of those two or three pages. Let me just get it here for a second. <laughs> Of course, when I need it, I can't find it. I had it this afternoon. Okay, pages 60, 66 through 69. And just kind of take a look and check off what you think uh, is important to you. Everybody will have different ideas, but that's what we're for is to sort them out. And um, we'll figure out where to go. Um, Okay. Sounds reasonable enough. Okay, we'll do that next meeting. Thanks, Norm. Thank you. For You're keeping welcome. us on task there. Well, everybody works so hard, and particularly you. Um, well, we did a sit back and shoot darts at what you drew, but um, <laughs> it just seems to me that with the effort and the importance um, Maybe we can get some action from the select board if we come up with something sensible, manageable, and a plan to begin the process. Okay, which could include, you know, the public or the school, you know, being part of. Yeah, yeah. Being responsible for some of these items and, and or, or, you know, seeing them through. So, okay, we'll do that next time. Thank you. Look at the plan. Thank you. Anything else for announcements? Okay, let's head down to the minutes for February 18th. And they look pretty good. Um, Bill, I think uh, let's just change the spelling on the development company for the, all those apartments. Um, flatly, F-L-A-T-L-E-Y, John Flatley. 
Okay, yep. Okay, just so we have that in the record correctly. Two C, I think the first word should be they. Yeah, I already fixed that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I think everything else is pretty hunky dory. Anyone want to make a motion? That we accept the minutes. Okay, Sherman. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, Andy. Any other discussion? So we'll we'll make those changes to them. Those two changes. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. So um, we'll meet on April 1st. Bill will need to warn that meeting and as well as let the abutting yep. landowners know. Yep, I got, I'm, I'm got a, my template pulled up for the notices, so yep. Okay, you're on top of it. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. No oh. moved. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? second. <laughs> Everyone wanted to make the motion. Okay. Thanks, everybody.